In this tutorial, we will show you how to do some basic searching using the quick search on the University of Michigan Flint's Thompson Library's homepage. Uh, quick search is an interdisciplinary search tool, meaning that it will bring back results related to chemistry and art history or psychology, again, depending on what search terms you're using. It will also bring back results from a multitude of formats, whether that is an academic journal article or an ebook or a physical book or even something like a dissertation, streaming media, newspaper articles, all of that will come back in searches done with Quick Search. So we're gonna start at the Thompson Library's homepage and just do a really basic minimal search on e-cigarette. Um, you can add some search terms and we'll also add some filters a little bit later to improve this search, but we're gonna start really basic for right now. Once we get to the search result page, it's pretty similar to other result pages that you've seen. You can go ahead and edit or even clear out a search using the kind of uh, box up at the top. You can even switch to an advanced search, which we do have another tutorial on. Once we get down into the results, though, there's going to be some differences that you'll see. Um, you will get that kind of common number of results or like kind of a listing of numbers of results that you have. So you got 28,000 plus right now, which is a lot to go through. Um, but you'll see some information and kind of context about these. So whether it's an article or a book or a dissertation or a video, those will kind of be marked up at the top. You'll see the title of that article, that book. You'll see information about the authors. If it is a book chapter or an article, you'll see information about that journal that it's coming from. So this first one's coming from Addictive Behaviors. It'll give you more publication information like the date as well as page numbers, even a tiny little snippet of um, the abstract as well. You'll also see some markers like peer-reviewed and open access to give you some information about what is actually coming back here. Um, additionally, let's look at seeing actually creating a better search. So right now we're at 28,500, which is a lot to go through. So we're actually going to go up and the first way to kind of make a better search is to add um, additional search terms. So in this case, I am looking for research that's been done about e-cigarettes and lung disease. Now, Quick Search, along with most other search engines and databases, kind of defaults to using the and operator so that we're looking for results that talk about e-cigarettes and lung disease. Um, so that's kind of, you don't necessarily need to put it in here. You could type it in in all caps just to make the point, but not necessarily. Um, and in other videos, especially our advanced search tutorial, we go into the other operators that you can use. But if I do edit this, I'm going to click search again. And you'll notice we go from uh, 28,000 down to 613, which is a lot that we kind of lost. You also see some of those additional uh, kind of content types. So we've got a video here, we've got a dissertation as well, and those are all marked. The other way that we can kind of make our search better in both Quick Search and other library databases is to use some of the filters. So we do have a full video on kind of making, um, using filters to improve searches, but two that I'm going to profit or kind of showcase here is the peer review journals. So this is one that a lot of your professors are going to ask you to kind of use because they're asking you to look for kind of primary sources of uh, scholarly activity. Um, that is published in those academic peer-reviewed journals. The other thing that, another thing that you might want to use right off the bat is the publication date filter. And so for me, I'm going to look for things that are published within the past like five years or so. Now, those filters took us from 600 some odd down to 263. So again, really powerful filters that you can use. If you do end up going in and editing this, so you want to look specifically for how e-cigarettes are affecting lung disease in, say, women or like teenagers or something. You could add in things up here. Um, if you don't remember your filters, though, any kind of editing to the search will kind of clear them out. So I'm going to ask it to remember my filters if I do want to change that search up. Okay. Now, getting into an article. Most of the time, especially for peer-reviewed articles, you should be able to download the PDF right away. Um, what happens is we've got this uh, little linking key here called libkey. It might ask you to log in with your unique name and password and then go through and do the Duo Mobile login, especially if you're off campus and you you know you aren't logged into any other kind of university um, 
program or this is like the first time you're going into the library on this browser session, you'll be prompted to log in like that. But once you do that, you should be able to, to see the full PDF of the text that you're looking for and download it from there. Now, if you're looking at an ebook or for some reason that download PDF option isn't available, there should uh, be this link to see if it is available. And typically you're going to give it be given kind of a list of uh, databases that we have access to this particular article um, through. So in this case, we've got uh, two options for Elsevier and another one that's Research Library, which is ProQuest. Um, and so if I click on this again, I'm already logged in. So it's taking me directly to that ProQuest database where I can download and, you know, get some help uh, accessing this either through a full PDF. Um, and additionally, there's some other tools that are kind of embedded in the database, like citing and copying and getting a permalink to this that are available here. Now, back on the results page, some of those tools are still here. So up at the top on next to each result, you'll see these little icons. So if I did actually want to go through and save um, an art or send an article to myself or get a good link back to this record, I could do that. So clicking on this little link and icon will give me a permalink again back to this record so that I can access it again without having to search for it. Um, you can even email directly to yourself as well. So it'll give you a good link back to this. Um, it will also even generate some citations in a few different um, styles that we've got enabled here. Now, with these citations, it is always a good idea to double check them against the manual um, because we have seen, you know, small errors and some larger errors that errors that kind of come back. So again, always double check, but they at least get you part of the way there. Okay. I will say you can save multiple articles to yourself. So I've just taken the first 10 and then again, I'm able to kind of email or export to like a citation manager um, some of these articles as well. So there are good options for kind of helping you um, get some of these articles and saving them for yourself. Now, if I want to clear out everything, I'm going to reset my filters and I can start a new search or clear it out up here. The other thing I'll note at the very, very top is if you have any questions or need some help with, please uh, ask a librarian. So if you click on ask us, it takes you to our ask a librarian page where you're able to chat as long as we're online, or it might take you to a couple of different tutorials, depending on what you're looking for. You can also email, call us, text us, um, even schedule an online or in-person librarian. So again, we are open and available to helping you. Um, and if you have any questions or need additional help, please let us know. Thank you for watching.